He was a completely European man. He was always surrounded by many young people, his students, who took part in his projects. He was a lecturer, too. He left his mark as a role model of his profession and was totally dedicated to it. If you observe his oeuvre, you will be amazed at the volume of work he produced. As far as I recall, he worked very much. Lado Aleksimis Khashili is probably one of the most important architects in the history of contemporary Georgian architecture. He perfected his creative activities during the Soviet era. It is significant that architects from this period were affected in a certain way by the political, economic and social phases that the Soviet Union was going through. Lado is a prime example of having witnessed many different changes and being influenced by them in certain ways. He was outstanding since he developed his own ways and strategies for avoiding such shackles and limitations whilst creating something. This is the first retrospective exhibition dedicated to Mr. Lado Alexi Meskishvili and reflects his complete legacy. The first attempt to expose his works occurred soon after his death. However, the current exhibition is voluminous, containing materials from the family archives, the national archives, libraries and the archives of his co-workers. Mr. Lado had to work in a very interesting period, when Stalin-type architecture shifted to the Khrushchev period, the so-called late Soviet socialist modernism, and his output covers these periods, and he creates works during both of them. Architecture in all of the republics had to bear its own national motives which is reflected in his numerous sketches. After the 1950s, when people felt a certain freedom, you can see his projects were executed with a totally different mindset. He was well versed in art and literature and was a great admirer of Frank Lloyd Wright, one of the founding fathers of organic architecture, i.e. the harmonious merging of architecture with its environment. As far as his attitude to nature is concerned, he adored the countryside and walked a great deal in the mountains. He was an outstanding sportsman, a Georgian champion in boxing and skiing. He was one of the founders of the Bakuriani Ski Academy. If you take a look at his works, you can see that his designs were originally merged with the environment. He would not violate or contradict nature, but make the building a part of it. For example, you can view the Chess Palace and its large fountain, or the Vake Park Cascade, which was the highest fountain in Europe at that time. I don't know if it's still the highest now, harmoniously placed in the center of the surrounding scenery. The same can be said of Tbilisi Sports Palace, which should be surrounded by a huge park, but is now unfortunately besieged by ugly buildings. The Sports Palace is distinguished for several of its features. One is architectural aspect, its facade, the design, but its engineering aspect is also extremely important. It was quite specific and innovative at the time. It was the first building in the Soviet Union to have such shell roofing applied. Specially designed and tested concrete slabs were produced for the roof that slotted together. While the numbers decreased silkerally upwards and were fixed together in the top arc without any support. It means that in fact the roof rests on the walls and they bear the entire load. Mr. David Kajaya obtained a patent for this style of roofing, since it was a genuinely unique and innovative event at the time. The Chess Palace and Alpine Club of Tbilisi 
is one more significant and extraordinary building that is here in Tbilisi. Similar to the sports palace, this building bears a multifaceted significance for both Tbilisi and Georgia. First of all, because of its name. The building was dedicated to outstanding accomplishments in both type of sports. Nona Gaprindashvili's victories attained in chess and then accomplishments of Alexander Japarize and his followers in alpinism. All of this leaves an echo in the construction and is reflected in its appearance, which is really captivating. If we take a closer look to the decorative elements, we discover that each detail represents the Queen's crown. The majority of the sketches exposed in this hall are unrealized projects. He always came up with ideas. There was not so much freedom then, and there were no such materials. The epoch was entirely different. Nonetheless, he managed to develop his own authentic style and to create remarkable projects. If you take a look at this sketch, it is a work of art. It is not a document or something. It is simply a work of art. All of the documentation that we managed to gather for this exhibition leaves room for youngsters and interested people to analyze and observe the recent past which was present not so long ago, and in a certain sense, is still in progress. Above all, it might be also perceived as an observation of the changes that are taking place quite intensely and in a very short period of time, and to comprehend this in terms of a specific profession and discipline that can later be applied in different directions.